<coughs> okay, um, what I'd like to do is show you how to graph the piecewise function. Now, a couple things you need to remember about piecewise functions is that piecewise functions, all they are is three separate functions with constraints, okay? And that's really all we're doing. So what I can do is I can rewrite this as three different functions and then graph them. So I'm going to write my final graph for my piecewise. I'm going to graph right here. But what I want you guys to understand is I can graph this as three different separate functions. I, the piecewise function is f of x equals negative 3x, f of x equals x, and f of x equals 8. Now, there's something special, though, also with piecewise functions is that they have constraints. So this one's constraint is x has to be less than or equal to negative 4. 0 has to be less than or equal, or I'm sorry, has to be less than x, which is less than or equal to 3. And here, x has to be greater than 3. Now, I'll get more into the constraints in a second, but let's go and take a look at first what each one of these graphs separately will look like. So the first one, f of x equals negative 3x. And if you don't really uh, remember how to graph this, we can remember a couple things. Uh, remember slope-intercept form. Right, where b is going to be our y-intercept and m is going to be our slope. So here, we don't have a y-intercept, or we do have a y-intercept, but it's zero, right? You can write plus zero. So therefore, it's going to cross at zero. Well, my slope tells me to go down three over one. Or I could go up three to the left one. Either way, it's going to look something like this. All right, so it's going to continue in that direction. To graph this equation, this again, I have a y-intercept of zero, but now my slope is one over one. So I can go up one to the right one, up one to the right one. I could also go to the left, down one to the left one. So my graph's gonna look like that for this one. And then for the final one, f of x equals eight. Now this one always gets a lot of people because we don't have an m or an x, meaning we don't have a slope. Right? Well, actually, we do have a slope, but our slope is actually equal to zero. This one is, well, you only know that our y-intercept's at eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have a y-intercept at eight, but I don't have a slope, meaning my slope is zero. So therefore, if you were to make a table of values, um, the one way I like to think about it, no matter what x is, my f of x always equals eight. It doesn't matter because I can't plug in a number for x and get a different y value. I'm always going to be 8. So your output will always be 8. So that's how you get that straight line. So that's what these three separate functions equal. So if you want to graph piecewise function, do each and every one of these functions separately. Then now let's look at our constraints. Well, our constraints are dealing with our x values, mainly that deal with on the x-axis. So what I want to do to constrain these, this says this graph is only true. It's only true when my x values, meaning my, my x number line, are less than negative 4. So let's go over. I only have this graph going to negative 1. Let's go over to 1, 2, 3, 4. So if you guys were to look at this, my graph is actually only true from right here, all these other points, these are when x is greater than, right? That's negative 3. That's 1. That's negative 1. All these other points are not less than negative 4. So therefore, they're not true. So they're not going to be included on my graph. All right? This one says this is only true for all the points that are between 0 and 3. So I look at between 0 and 3, 1, 2, 3. So only between these two points does my graph work. The rest of the points, greater than 3 or less than 0, are not part of my graph, right? You can see this is x is negative 1. Since x is negative 1, it's not part, it's not true for this function. So therefore, that doesn't count. And then here, this is only true for my values when x is greater than 3. So that means it's only true when x is greater than 3. The rest of my graph, I can get rid of. So then a piecewise function, all it is, guys, is three separate functions with their constraints, and then now we're going to put them onto one graph. Okay. 
so then this one went to negative four, one, two, three, four. And then it went up at, um, so up three over one, up three over one, up three over one, up three over one. This one was from zero up three. And then this one went from, oh, sorry, that's not part of it, over three, over three. That's probably about right there. And then this one went from three, and I'm sorry, this is an open knot. This means it's greater than, so it's going to be an open, and that one's less than or equal to. Whenever it's greater than or not greater than or equal to, it's going to be an open knot. So then this one goes up to eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you guys remember, this would not be a function. If these were two closed dots, that means we'd have two points um, on the same x value, so therefore it wouldn't be a function. That's why one of them has to be an open dot, which this one was because it just says x is greater than 8, 3. So it's going to be an open dot going in that direction. So that is your piecewise function for that equation.